meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. I'm going to, I'm going to believe that that's true, even though I can't see it on my screen yet. So, uh, Hey, everybody in the Align Women community. Uh, this is Amy Evans for those of you I haven't met yet. Uh, and I am really excited to have a conversation today with the amazing, incomparable Jackie Kibler, who has become a good friend. She is an integral part of how the Align Women organization runs. She's a member of one of my networking masterminds, and she's just an amazing human who is super supportive of entrepreneurs and particularly female entrepreneurs. And she and I have been working together for the last three months, four months yeah. on implementing the entrepreneurial operating system into Align Women. And I'm going to let her describe that to you because she'll do it much more eloquently than I will. Um, and then we're going to have a conversation about the Align Women organization. And we are open to your questions. So I'm going to, you'll see me glancing uh, up a little bit. I've got a couple monitors open and I've got the Facebook live open uh, so that I can see your comments. And uh, we're looking forward to interacting with you and helping you understand uh, more about what Align Women is all about. So Jackie, I will turn it over to you. Ask me whatever you want. I am so excited, Amy, because this is the first time the tables have been turned. You yeah. are usually the interviewer. And I was really happy when you were like, yeah, I'll be interviewed. So that takes a lot. So thank you for that. So um, let's start with just tell the, tell, tell a little bit about the journey of Align Women. Whew. Um, Small the question, I know. The, yeah, exactly. The, the condensed version is I was unsatisfied with the options I had for networking for business development in Los Angeles for my business, which is an insurance agency that specializes in employee benefits. And my referral sources tend to be uh, trusted advisors like CPAs and attorneys. And the groups in Los Angeles that I spent time in, in order to meet those types of people and get the types of referrals that would help me grow my business were not groups I really felt aligned with. Uh, there were lots of different reasons. Um, I wouldn't single any group out in particular. All of them have value. All, there are a lot of successful ones. They just weren't working for me. And after doing some some thinking about what I didn't like and then figuring out what I wanted and then realizing that what I wanted didn't really exist. I decided to build it myself. And that was sort of the seedling of Align Women as an organization, which was my first networking mastermind, which I started last year in the spring with uh, about a dozen women. Um, and it was a, a, a commitment that we ran for a year so that only ended earlier this year. Um, and the networking mastermind was the, the genesis of the, the entire Align Women organization. It's grown to be a lot more since then, but that was how it started. Hmm. So you talk about where, where it's gone since it started. <laughs> so when you and I first started talking, you were interested in setting up a foundation to ensure its growth. Talk about your mindset around that and where you now see the organization growing and going to. Yeah, so what happened after that first chapter that I described, or, or actually during the first chapter I described, was that the, the kind of networking organization that I wanted to build didn't exist. And as I started talking about it, in my circles and on social media in order to find other women who wanted to participate in that first group. I got a lot of feedback from a lot of women all over the country who said, this is a really interesting concept. We don't have anything like this. How can I get involved? And initially, I didn't have a good answer for that because I had filled the mastermind. It was closed to new members. It's a it's a 12 month container. Uh, it is not a rotating uh, group of people in and out. And so people would say, how do I get involved? And I would say, maybe next year when we start another cycle. And mm -hmm. I realized that there was so much interest in 
in, in the in the concept in in providing a way to network that that felt more aligned with the way women build relationships and do business together um it, it certainly was within the kind of the, the zeitgeist of the me too movement and the idea that women could could have things that were theirs in ways that they wanted to do things and we didn't just have to play uh by by the the rules that the boys set up and in the organizations that the boys set up um and so over the course of last year the networking mastermind was running i was getting all this interest i decided to start building a facebook group uh, and then in the fall, I started a podcast, which initially in its in its first iteration was me interviewing lots of cool women that I know who were doing very interesting and innovative things. And I wanted to be able to share their stories with a bigger audience. And through this process, it became obvious to me that a I was super passionate about what I was doing. I was passionate about supporting women, about uh, keeping a conversation focused on business development and revenue, um, about highlighting other women in business who were doing interesting and innovative things, about um, networking and uh, different ways of networking that can be more productive and more effective than than traditional networking. I put that in air quotes. And uh, and it, it was clear that this was what was drawing a lot of my attention and energy. And I wanted to to put a foundation under it, like you said, that would allow it to have eventually exponential growth and also pull all the pieces together, which for me never felt disparate. They were all connected, but pull them together in a way that other people could understand how all of those pieces fit under one umbrella and where all of those things were going. And that was really what the EOS system helped me to do in working with you to pull it all into one cohesive organization that then I can grow uh, and and bring outside people in to help me grow, which is which is part of the evolution that's happened this year. Which is awesome. And as your EOS implementer, which I am grateful to be, <laughs> just you putting together your core values and that vision and bringing out your your accountability chart or what you want the company to look like to grow into was phenomenal. <clears throat> One of the things that I wanted to ask you about that um, definitely intrigued me and I would love to hear from this Facebook community of amazing women was this is networking with intention. Mm -hmm. And that really is the core focus of what you do. It's networking with intention. What does that really mean to you? Yeah. So um the the concept of that like the phraseology which really came from one of our mastermind members linda wells so i'll give her a shout out because i described to her what i was doing with with lots of passion but not necessarily lots of eloquence and she said oh what you're describing is networking with intention and i went there it is we got it thank you there's the tagline i love it um I, as a, as an entrepreneur and I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I'm currently running my fifth business, my insurance agency and my sixth business align women at the same time. Um, time is my most important resource. I, I think that's true as human beings. Um, and, and certainly as an entrepreneur, I have to be really clear about my, my highest goals and where to put my time. And I didn't feel like the kind of networking I was doing was a good use of my time. I felt like there was a lot of spinning wheels. There was a lot of being in a room of 50 people where only maybe two or three of them were really ideal networking partners for me. Um, there was a lot of putting each other on our mailing lists or having a nice conversation once a month or going to coffee, but not really any effective business development coming from that. And so the concept of networking with intention came out of what wasn't working in my previous efforts. And if I can express it succinctly, let's run with this. This just ended up on paper this morning for the purpose of me being able to explain it. I'm going to use the acronym CLEAR because I love the word CLEAR and I love clarity. And here's what networking with intention is. It is a curated group of people, meaning instead of going to an event and hoping that the people you want to do business with are there, you're creating a group of people 
that are all the kinds of people that you want to do business with. So there's a lot alignment in terms of energy, in terms of it with aligned women, there's alignment in terms of gender. I like doing business with women and I like supporting other women who are building their businesses. Uh, there's alignment in terms of the clients we serve. So with my insurance agency, we uh, we like to work, I work with small and medium businesses. So I want to network with other people who are working with small and medium businesses. People who work with individuals are not good referral sources for me. And people who work with Fortune 500 companies aren't good referral sources for me. So, uh, so that alignment is important. And then also the types of uh, products and services that we offer to our clients, the more alignment there is there, the easier it is to shift a conversation from, employee benefits to HR services, from HR services to payroll, from payroll to employment law, from employment law to IT services. So in my current mastermind, which I built for my insurance agency, those were all the types of women in there. So a curated group of people, which is the first letter of Claire, is really, really important. Uh, the second is leverage. And I think this is something that I just realized after reading How Women Rise by Sally Helgeson. Um, is something that women are not good at doing. We're good at building relationships. We're not good at leveraging them unless we're leveraging them on behalf of somebody else. But leveraging them for ourselves is not a strong point for us. Definitely. And so learning yeah. how to um, ask for what you want, learning how to be direct about what will help you build your business, being clear on your value and what you have to bring to that exchange. What that book pointed out to me was a lot of times we think we don't have anything to offer. And so we're afraid to approach somebody that might have something to offer us. So getting clear on your worth and what you have to offer, which is a very internal process and very much about personal development, not necessarily about business development, but that it affects how confident you are in your business development. So leverage is another important piece. Uh, engagement. One of the things I found in the other groups was there wasn't a lot of engagement with each other and specifically engagement in what you're doing and what your business is. Maybe you go, may, maybe you would go to a meeting every month, but you weren't necessarily engaged with the people at that meeting to understand what they needed and help them to understand what you needed. So a very high level of engagement is part of networking with intention. And then advocacy. And this is another thing I got out of uh, the How Women Rise book. Um, it, it, mentorship is great. Advocacy is better, meaning acting on behalf of somebody else, really proactively helping to connect them, to promote them, to talk about their business. Being an advocate for them is a, a, a piece of networking with intention and something that we employ in our networking masterminds. And then the last one, the R, if anybody's hung around with me for any amount of time knows that one's revenue, dollar signs. We are in business in order to have an impact and money helps us have an impact. There is nothing wrong with being profitable. If you can grow your business, have a bigger impact, help more people, have money to give away, whatever it is that you wanna do with the revenue that's generated from your impact in order to have more impact, I support that 100%. And I think women need to be loud and proud about being profitable, about looking to be profitable, about having the tools to be profitable. And so I would not have a conversation about networking with intention that did not include revenue. So that's my, that's as succinct a way as I can explain what networking with intention is all about. And funny, because again, as your implementer, I know when you get something in your mind, it's going on paper and there it goes. It's going into the, in, uh, onto the, on, onto, into the, into the infrastructure of the company, if you will. Yep. And what happens with me, which it, this has been a process that's been true for 20 or 30 years. I can go to sleep with a question and I can wake up with an answer. And typically when I wake up, it's pouring out of me before I even get out of bed and I've got to grab my phone. And like, that, that's exactly what I did this morning. Um, when, when the answer is the right answer, it is really, really, really clear to me. Crystal clear, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, as we've been building out where you want the company to go and grow, we've talked about for the masterminds, where you want it to go. Yeah. And so we talked about having group leaders and what that might look like. So if I wanted to be a future mastermind <laughs> leader. Hi, Sakura. Thanks for participating. 
What do I need to have? You know, that's the beauty of coronavirus and Zoom. Love it. Right? So hello, puppy. <laughs> it's authenticity. I love it. <laughs> it's at least that. So what, what does it take to be a mastermind leader of Align Women? Yeah, so one of the things that's unique about an Align Women networking mastermind is that the leader of the mastermind builds her own group. It's not like other organizations where a corporate office gets an application and assigns somebody based on geography or, or, or perceived fit. These groups work because the leader is the one that is vetting the members to make sure that there's the alignment around whatever whatever that group needs. So my group is around uh, business to business services in, in that, that support companies that have employees and all the things that go with employees. We have another group that's business to consumer and those women sell directly to individuals. So their focus is very different from the business to business group. There could be a group around event planning, wedding planning, spaces, photography, uh, floral arrangements. I mean, there's there's a, a million different opportunities to build a group of the ideal women that you want to network with. And a group leader needs to be a few things. Um, the, the, the easiest two word answer is they need to be a super connector. Um, so somebody who is, um, Who's, who's got a, a real deep list of contacts, um, who sees the value in leading the group from a win-win-win perspective. So uh, rather than, than keeping score, keeping a tally about who's getting more referrals or who's giving more referrals, the, the idea is that the, the synergy that's created amongst all these women raises the success of all of them. And I've certainly found that in the groups that I have run so far. So someone who wants to lead a group um, believes in the value of helping everybody to be successful. Um, they're certainly somebody who is uh, of, a, of a growth mindset and of an abundance mindset. So there's lots of opportunity out there. We're not competing with each other. The more we can help each other and, and, and lift, uh, put out a hand in order to lift each other up, the better we all succeed from that. Um, a group leader would also be somebody who's willing to be a little disruptive. Um, that that's one of my one of my core values is that uh, we're 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 standing in an um, in a in a in a structure that's a little bit different that that sometimes rubs people the wrong way. I guarantee you, I get questions all the time from men who go, "Well, I want to be a member of your mastermind," and you know, it doesn't matter how I explain why this is a group for women, I'm still going to get some pushback. So being being willing to be a little bit disruptive is a is a really good quality. Um, uh, and belief that women deserve their own spaces, that they network differently. That doesn't mean that you wouldn't be a member of other groups that, that are, that, that have both men and women. This is not, uh, this is not a group that's meant to exclude men. It's a group that's meant to support women in a very unique and special way. Um, and, and someone who, who is a group leader would be passionate about, um, supporting women and supporting women in business. Again, not to the exclusion of men, but with a particular focus on supporting women. Okay. And there's definitely a, you know, there's a sales aspect to being a group leader in that what you're doing is you're understanding the value of building this group. And then you are looking for the other members that you want in your group that are going to be aligned with the passion and the energy that you bring. You're, you're really creating your ideal uh, referral team. Fantastic. So sounds like a little bit of a unicorn, which is the word I use for anyone who has to build their own group. Yeah. Um, having said that, it sounds like it's limitless. And with the thousands of folks that are part of this group, I mean, you may have interest from people near and far, which is awesome. It's true. And, and uh, on our website, which has just been revamped, there is which is amazing. Button. Thank you. There's a button right there at the top. So the website, and I'll put it in the comments, is alignwomen.org. So align women, all one word. Um, and it's .org, not .com. And right there at the top, there's a button that says join a networking mastermind. And anybody who is interested in being part of future masterminds, 
um, is welcome to uh, fill that form out. And as we develop in other areas, uh, I've got my good friend, Emma Fox. I know she's watching and she's up in Portland and she knows she's on my short list of, uh, of group leaders for the next cycle. Uh, I've got interest in the Midwest. I've had an interest in Orange County. I've got someone who just recently reached out from Washington State. So the idea is to duplicate the format we haven't really gotten into the structure of the masterminds or the format of the meetings, but there is a very specific format. Um, and, and the idea is that that format can be duplicated for anyone anywhere that wants to build a, a really high powered team of women. Very cool. So I'm gonna just, now let's go to the business side of this amazing organization. What was the impetus for you wanting to bring EOS into your organization? Uh, um, a couple pieces, uh, and I, I have said this about you many times, you and I met, um, we were introduced because someone thought that you would be a great member of um, my business to business networking mastermind, and they were absolutely right. I was going to so, say I should be right. <laughs> right. And so you and I met uh, from that perspective first. And um, it was, of course, the perfect timing. Um, I am a bit of, of a unicorn myself in that, uh, unlike a lot of businesses that tend to grow without structure and then hit a wall and realize that they need some structure, um, which I know, I know you've worked with a lot of companies that have been in that situation. Yeah. I'm the kind of person, because I'm systems driven, I am an ENTJ, if anybody's familiar with the Myers-Briggs, and that is a, I am a systems driven person, I tend to build systems and then throw everything at them and allow the system to chew and process and organize and let everything sort itself out. And so I had a desire for a system probably a lot sooner than a lot of entrepreneurs would. Um, and, and some of that is because I'm running another business, a full-time business uh, at the same time, which means back to the value of my time, I, I need things that are efficient and effective. Um, the other piece of it is, you know, uh, EOS is, a, is an operating system, but there's a lot of vision building and clarity that goes along with that. And I mentioned early on talking to Linda Wells, uh, about what Align Women was and speaking with passion, but not necessarily with eloquence. I felt after about a year of putting all these pieces out there that while I understood how they all connected, I didn't, I didn't know that everybody else did. And I needed a way to organize all of that and see how all those pieces fit together. And some of that was the more ethereal values piece of it and 10 year vision piece of it. And some of that was the much more practical accountability chart piece of it. And all of that for me was real important to get all these pieces. And, and literally I had pieces everywhere. I had notebooks and I had post-its and I had things in Trello and I had things in Google Drive. And I, you know, anytime I had an idea for something I would throw it somewhere and I needed to be able to gather all of those and put them in a, a, a cohesive form. And so working with you helped me do that. The, the other piece of that was knowing that this is going to scale. This business is going to scale, both because of my passion and because of the interest that other people have in it. And that means other people have to be involved. I can't do it all myself. To get other people involved means I need to be able to communicate what we're doing and where we're going. I need to, I need to have that clarity. It can't just be in my head. And so getting you involved to help me put that we'll use air quotes on paper, was really valuable because now I know as I bring in either employees or strategic partners, I can clearly communicate to them, here are our values, here's where you fit in in the accountability chart, like this is, this is what we're doing and where we're going, here are our one-year goals and our three-year goals, this is where we're going, and make sure that the people I'm bringing in are aligned with all of that. Yes. That's one of the things that I that I thought was real is really valuable in implementing EOS with organizations because as you're building out that accountability chart, which is building out your company the way you want it, 
two years out. It's all about the structure of what it looks like versus the people. And the cool thing with you is we were building this out knowing that right now it's all, it is all only structure, but this way you've got those expectations brought in. And then those core values, that is who you are, right? That's your, <clears throat> your drive of who you are as an organization. So, I mean, I think, I mean, you've done phenomenal and I am so excited that, to, that I'm a part of this um, on both fronts, one, you as a client and one, me as a member of the mastermind and helping you to grow this out. All right. So I see, it looks like, are there questions? Cause I see you uh, looking up. Let's, I let's know go. I'm looking, I'm looking over. I can't, I can't get all the screens lined up right behind my camera. I um, it. I, I wanted to mention too, another real value out of working with you, um, is that I, I have to, I, I have to toe the line or I have to wear both hats when it comes to being both the visionary for my business, seeing sort of the long-term picture and the, to use an EOS term, the integrator for my business, which means taking that vision and pulling it down into practical application. And I would have thought always that I was an integrator, being that I'm an ENTJ, I'm systems driven. Um, it took me going through this process to realize that what I really am is the visionary, at least when it comes to Align Women, Yes. and that handing off the integrator role is what's going to serve me well as we grow. And there's a, there's a story in EOS world about letting go of the vine, which, yes. which an entrepreneur needs to do eventually, a visionary needs to do, that, which just means like you can't do it all yourself. There's a point at which if you want to grow, you need to bring other people in. And even by bringing other people in, the organization becomes all of ours, not just mine. And by working with you, I think I have put the things in place to help me make that transition a lot easier than I would have had to do by myself. Um, and and that, that's, been, that's been a really valuable piece too. We do have a question. Hey, Dawn. Hi, hi, Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Um, I, uh, we have a question from Michelle that I really like. She says, how would it work for a business that's considered woo-woo? Is there a place for a business like this in your mastermind model? So Michelle, I'm very familiar with Woo Woo. My husband is a transformational life coach and a breathwork teacher. Uh, we have lots of wonderful Woo Woo mediums and psychics and uh, and all kinds of, and I, I say that with love, Woo Woo people in our circle. And the way that I would discuss a mastermind and, and maybe somebody potentially leading a mastermind is, who are your ideal people to network with? You would, no matter how woo woo your business, it's a business. You need to get clients. You need those clients to pay you. Um, you might build your business solely on advertising, but a lot of businesses build on referrals, on word of mouth, on uh, partnering with other people who have access to the same types of prospective clients that you do. And so if you can come up with a list of 10 to 12 women that you feel would be great referral partners for you, that's the seedling for an Align Women Mastermind. Um, how you talk about your businesses, how you engage, um, that, that's, that's all what the, how, what the Align Women Masterminds, uh, like the infrastructure of the masterminds are. Um, but if you've got 10 or 12 other women who all have businesses, who are all interested in growing those businesses, who are all interested in bringing on clients, bringing on revenue. Um, that's how you start building a mastermind. And you may know specific women that fill those roles, or you may just say, wow, I'd really like to have a, a, a hypnotherapist in my network. That would be a great referral source for me. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to know the person, but know the role. And then those are the roles that you would want to fill if you were going to start your own masterminds. Hope that makes sense. Any other questions? Ah, Emma says, aha, any advice on getting in front of the right audience? I spend a lot of time with colleagues instead of prospects. Is referrals the only way? So I know Emma well. She's a really good friend of mine and she does a version of what I do with employee benefits up in Portland. And I have definitely struggled with the, the draw of networking with people in my own industry because mm -hmm. they speak my language. They know what's going on. We can share our woes and our struggles and frustrations. The problem with Misery. people- Misery, you're commiserating. Yeah. 
the problem with people in my own industry is they all want the same business that I want. And the likelihood is that they're not sending me referrals. There are lots of different types of networking and industry networking, I think is very important. I go to industry events. I want to meet carrier reps and other, uh, other people who provide services. I want legislative updates, but I don't do those things to build my business and realizing that that was a different thing was really useful to me because I could spend lots of time going, why am I going to all these networking events and happy hours and things and no referrals are coming to me because I'm not networking with people who want to send me referrals. Um, my, my experience is that rather than going to events, I want to have a curated group of people that I bring in to meet close and really, really, really get to know. So I am a quality over quantity person. I am to many people's surprise an introvert, not an extrovert. And that is a, a function of being an introvert. I don't want to be in a room of 50 people. I want to be in a room of 10 people. So back to my recommendation for Michelle, um, figuring out those roles, those people that are the most likely to give referrals, those people that you are the most likely to benefit and building that group from there. I, I I, this is the only networking I do anymore for my business. And it has proven to be much more profitable than paying for an expensive group, going to a bunch of lunches. I mean, we can't even really do a lot of the lunching and coffee and, and big events that we've done before. So I feel really fortunate that this model started last year as a virtual model with virtual meetings. And it's just flowed straight into, um, you know, COVID world this year. So what I'm hearing you say is that you go deep versus wide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the engagement piece. And, and just to, to throw in a little bit, the networking masterminds have a very specific structure. So how to build one is one thing. And I work with women who want to build their own masterminds and mentor them and help them to go through the building process. How to run one is the second part of what makes this process work so well. And there are very specific meeting topics and very specific questions that all members answer at each meeting. And each of those questions helps all of us in the group understand everyone's business better. So one month we might focus on uh, marketing and what kind of marketing tools we use. And, and that can vary depending on the business. One month we might focus on clients and who our ideal clients are. One month we'll focus on um, th our products and what our most profitable products are. Do we have any lost leaders? What generates the most revenue for us? And each month builds on the last and allows us to really understand from all kinds of different angles how our businesses work so that when we're pro providing each other with referrals, we're really providing the best possible referrals. We're not getting the smallest client with the biggest problem, which was my experience being in a paid networking group that, you know, everyone would say, you've got to be in here for a year and then, and then maybe you'll start getting referrals and the referrals you get are like the shittiest client that that person has so that they're testing you out to see if you might do a good job on the shitty client, which is actually really hard if they're bad. And then maybe they'll give you the next least shitty client and then see if you do well there. I, I just don't believe in that. That is not, a to B efficient networking for me. Well, so it also doesn't build trust. Right. And one thing that I appreciate within the groups that we have are, is that there is trust and you get to know them and appreciate them, know their sweet spot and, and, and you know who to refer to them. And, and yes. And thank you for saying that. I think part of the intentional magic there is that when the group leader builds the group, it establishes some of that no like and trust as the group starts. So yes, there'll be people coming in that don't know all the other people, but there is a there is a, a container that's created by the group leader that then allows everyone to enter with a level of trust to begin with, as opposed to being a member of a group for a year and trying to build that. You start with a very stable footing so that the referrals and the revenue can come more quickly. Exactly. Exactly. Any more questions? Let's see. Uh, just happy, happy comments. Um, 
Michelle asks, does the model I'm using for leadership resonate with Dare to Lead or the Wolfpack model? Michelle, I will be very transparent that I don't know what either one of those models looks like. So I can't say this is something I've built myself um, and I didn't borrow the concept from any other uh, models. So I, I don't know, but I'm curious to learn more about them. I am too, from all the networking organizations or membership organizations I've been in, I haven't heard of either of those. There's so many out there. And I mean, it's- I'm assuming Dare to Lead is a Brene Brown, um, I would is, a, is a Brene Brown foundation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, how much more time do we have? I mean, I, I, we can keep, I, you and I can keep talking all day and I definitely can talk EOS and I know we can both talk about um, about align women. Yeah. So what's, what would you like our final? <sighs> I think one of the questions I sent to you, so I'll ask it of myself. <laughs> which oh, is fun. Wait, no, 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 no. Do it, do it. What's the hardest part been so far? <laughs> I love Jackie. What's the hardest part been so far? Um, and, and this will make sense if you've been listening from the beginning, the, the hardest part has been creating a cohesion so that people understand what Align Women is as a brand, because a lot of people experience Align Women from different angles. When I first started building the organization, it was the networking mastermind. So the people I initially reached out to uh, using the Align Women brand were people who, who, who learned about the networking masterminds. They didn't necessarily know a podcast was coming. When I set up the podcast, the people I invited to be guests on the podcast learned about Align Women from the podcast perspective, not necessarily the networking masterminds. Um, and, and then I've, I've spoken in the last year um, at, at public opportunities where I've talked more about kind of the philosophy of, of networking and networking with intention. And so people learn the Align Women brand from that angle. Um, I had a pretty boring, non-dynamic website. Uh, and when people, it was just really a, a thing I threw up to hold the you know URL and give somebody a place to go, but it didn't do a good job of explaining the organization kind of from beginning to end. And, and now I feel like it, the, the story is told much better and it, it makes more sense how all these pieces fit together. But in the beginning, it was really hard for me to, to communicate that in a cohesive way. Well, the cool thing is if you look in the rear view mirror, this has been a year, maybe a little more. Right. So yeah. you've accomplished oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Within within that time frame. It's a lot. And it's like it's like it's like, it's like watching a volcano erupt, right? There's lava comes out here, and lava comes out there, and lava comes out there. And then I'm trying to like contain it all and its ideas and its energy and its partnerships and it's it's a lot of different stuff. Oh yeah, another piece that, you know, the Facebook community was another piece that I started building to kind of give people a place to go when I didn't have another place to put them. And now we've got almost a thousand members. And so some people experience Align Women First from the Facebook community and don't necessarily know we've got networking masterminds or a podcast or a website. So guess um, what? What? They do now. They do now. Look you know, at this. Mich Michelle asked a, a really good question that I, she's asking fantastic questions that I wanted to throw in here in, in terms of challenges. Um, is there training on how to create and maintain a, cre a container? I've tried and find that it falls flat after four weeks. Yes, mm -hmm. that was one of the experiences that I had. I was in a paid networking group um, where there were maybe 25 people in my group and three or four of them that were really good referral partners for me. And so we would, um, I, and I saw this happen a few times, one of us would go, hey, you know, we should really get together. Let's schedule some time, you know, happy hour once a month or a lunch once a month so that the four or five of us can get together and really talk about how to do business together. And I found that those fizzled and Michelle, maybe that's similar to your experience. Everybody's real high on the idea at the beginning, but then there's scheduling conflicts and then someone gets busy on something else. And sort of as soon as one or two people start not being able to make it, it all falls apart. And what I really firmly believe is that 
there needs to be a commitment. And in my networking masterminds, that's a 12 month commitment. There needs to be a fee. And so the current mastermind membership fee is $1,200 for the 12 months. And there needs to be an expectation of a very high level of engagement amongst the members. And all of that is communicated as part of the onboarding process when we set up a new mastermind. So it is very clear to people who join the mastermind that this is something very different, that the, the meetings are going to be a very high level of engagement, that everybody's going to get the opportunity to speak, which I can't stress enough for women who've been in math mastermind in, in networking meetings that are maybe dominated by men who are real loud and brash and kind of suck all the air out of the room. In our meetings, when we have questions for the members, every single member gets an opportunity to answer those questions. So nobody, even the shy people, it's okay if you're shy, you're still gonna get called on and you're still gonna get the opportunity. And even if you can't make the meeting, which happens sometimes, I'm sending those questions out to you so that you can respond to them by email and all the members can get your answers. So all of that creates a high level of commitment and engagement that keeps people involved. And I guarantee you, once you start generating revenue, which in all three of the masterminds that I've run now, uh, revenue started in about month three in terms of referrals going between members that started to create actual money. Um, that keeps people coming back <laughs> when they start seeing the results and they realize how different this kind of structure is from other structures. It keeps people engaged. So I actually want to add two things to that. Yeah. One with Align Women, you created an operating agreement and we walked through that operating agreement. So that is something that was discussed, agreed upon and implemented. And then the second part of that is because the the groups are capped at 12, that helps to facilitate, you know, that engagement. Um, you know, some of the other um, networking groups that are out there, they may have 35, 40 people in a group. Yeah. And it's very hard to create that relationship with that size of a, of a group. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I would, I would ask yourself, like Emma in Portland, if you're looking for you know, groups to join, like if you're getting into a room with 35 or 40 people, is it possible that all of those 35 or 40 people are going to be good referral sources for you? Right. It, it, it's probably not. Why not build a room full of the referral sources that are going to be the best for you and for everybody else in the group? It's, it's designed to be a win for you, a win for the other group members, and of course, a win for your client. At least the dog isn't barking. Wait, I'm gonna... it's all good. <laughs> I I appreciate you so much uh, coming up with fun questions to ask me and turning the tables on me a little bit because well, yes, usually was, I'm. I think this was very needed for your community, your following, and where you want to go with this company. And and as your implementer, <laughs> it is important that the face, the visionary make sure that she lets people understand what it is, how they can do it or get involved, where your history is, where you want to go, some of the challenges. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I thought this was awesome. I um, think you're awesome. I think uh, you're awesome. I tagged you, uh, in the, in the event, but I will be sure I include you in the comments so that if people are interested in reaching out to you, um, you, in terms of how we ended up working together, uh, because I first experienced you as a, a member of, of my, my business to business mastermind, um, what is very obvious very quickly, if it isn't obvious to you already in this conversation is that Jackie is really, really good at asking questions about your business and about your vision to help you get clarity on where you're going. And she has a system that allows that, that when applied gives you lots of pieces and lots of tools. It has lots of lingo and it has lots of forms and things, but she at her core is really good at hearing what it is you want and where you're headed. And that was what attracted me to her as uh, as a, a, a business coach. I mean, really, that's what she is for me. She's an, she's an implementer of an operating system, but she helps me to get clarity on 
where I'm going with the organization. And she has been invaluable in that role. So if that sounds like it would be useful for you, um, she's a wonderful person to talk to. She is a super connector herself. Um, and I, I highly recommend uh, reaching out to her if you think that would be of value to you because she's awesome. Oh, thank you for saying that. What if we did, um, what if we did something for the folks that are listening? Do it, do it. We <laughs> didn't even have this planned, I promise. I know we did it, uh, but you know, I throw things out there and you and I sort of yin and yang. Yeah, we do. So what if for the members of uh, the Align Women community, I offered if they want to have an evaluation and have a discussion about their company, we can talk about some of the issues that are going on. I'll do that, at, uh, you know, complimentary because we're all part of Align Women and I'm very, very happy to help. Um, and then, you know, if it's something that you decide you want to move forward with like Amy did, let's figure something out. I love it. How would you like for people to get a hold of you if they want to take you up on that generous offer? What do you suggest? Should I, I mean? Whatever you're comfortable with. I can post contact information in the comments on the video. Let's, yeah, let's post contact information okay. with my email address. That'd be fantastic. I will. And I'm very good at making sure that I'm very responsive as Amy will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's awesome. She is awesome. Well, this has been super fun. I appreciate everybody who's been on and commenting. It makes it fun to have the interaction and it, 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 it I like the, the energy and the juice of knowing that other people are engaged. So uh, that's been fun. If you want to learn more about the Align Women organization, I'm so thrilled that I can point you to a an awesome website, um, which is alignwomen.org. Um, it has lots of fun features. Um, let's see, it has all our social media links. It has a button right there on the top of the first page if you are interested in joining a networking mastermind. Uh, it has a, a page that explains what networking with intention is all about. It has a description of the details of a networking mastermind, that it's a 12 month commitment, that it has a fee, what you can expect to get for being a member of a networking mastermind. It has a directory of our current mastermind members, which of course, what I'm gonna do, Jackie, is take the link to your digital business card yeah, on our Align Women page. My website and everything. And I'm gonna put that in the comments. And my so videos that, on there. Yeah, that's where people can get to you. <laughs> so, uh, so all the members are listed there. If you're curious to see what the makeup of the current masterminds look like, uh, you can go there. And then there's a podcast page that um, will direct you to our podcast website where you can listen to episodes, including Jackie's, uh, including Don mine too, by the way. Thank you. Including Don <laughs> McFarland's, she's been on here and including Emma Fox's. Those were both uh, super popular podcast episodes. So you can, you can visit the website there. And uh, if you're interested in being a podcast guest, there's a form you can fill out and we will very soon have the opportunity to sponsor episodes of the podcast. So uh, my contact information's there. You are welcome to reach out to me. Uh, and it has been an absolute delight to share Jackie with you and share the story of Align Women with you. And I appreciate you guys watching and being a part of the Align Women community so much. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. you are awesome, Jackie. I will put your contact information in there so people can reach out to you. Woohoo! Thanks. <laughs> appreciate you. Appreciate Bye, you. everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye.